Hello all. Once you import a geometry for analysis in Ansys Workbench, it's very easy thing to generate a mesh. Just click that mesh and click update. Workbench will automatically sense the size of geometry and it will create a mesh for you. Sometimes you will have to do some better analysis and we will reduce the size of the element so that we can get a better mesh like this. But we should also concentrate on about the quality of that mesh. So the quality of mesh not only depends on the size of the mesh. There are some metrics. Go to the mesh metric. Okay, once you click the mesh metric, we can see many number of mesh metrics that you have to observe before proceeding into the analysis. So let me just give an introduction about some of that metrics. See aspect ratio. So we know that aspect ratio. So if you take an element that is uh, here, you can see uh, more or less a prismatic element. So here, this uh, image give a very clear picture about the aspect ratio of any mesh element. So by this, we can confirm whether your mesh is having some good quality or not. So if the aspect ratio is equal to one, that means your element is a perfect square or perfect. Prism having equal sides in width as well as height. So here you can see the metrics. In this particular mesh, the maximum aspect ratio is 6.3. That means the uh, somewhere the this diagonal length or this E A is six times greater than this B in some of the elements. And also I can observe that the minimum aspect ratio is 1.07. That is more or less equal to one. So in some regions we can also see a perfect element with a very good aspect ratio that means the a or b are more or less equal so this is one metric by which we can measure the quality you can also see where the poor quality meshes are there so this is the poor quality mesh that is around six times the width of the element or the height of the element is six times of the other so if you click this that will show you where that such type of elements are there but here you cannot see any element let me move on to the another okay, here i can see around uh, four we can also observe the reason for that here you can see there is a larger length here and here you can see some smaller uh, the height of the element is very less than this width so that's why the aspect ratio is very high here. And let's move on to another mesh metric that is Jacobian ratio. So the Jacobian ratio tells us, uh, let me show you an example of that. So if the Jacobian ratio is equal to one, that the mesh will be a perfect mesh. If the Jacobian ratio is uh, getting reduced, it will lead to uh, the self-intersecting things like this here you can see this is a very good element having good at Jacobian ratio and here uh, you can see the self intersecting element this is the result of Jacobian ratio which is very less or uh, in case in some cases it may be negative so if you have Jacobian ratio in negative it will result in this such type of uh, self intersecting elements so this is one such matrix that we can observe from a mesh in ANSYS workbench. So here we are having a minimum Jacobian ratio as 1 and maximum Jacobian ratio as 8. So it is mentioned that uh, in this website a Jacobian ratio of 40 or less is acceptable but in th this case we are having a Jacobian ratio of uh, 8.3 something so that is acceptable I think so. So here we can see where the Jacobian ratios are very high. These are the elements where the Jacobian ratio is equal to 1 and these elements having the Jacobian ratio around 2 and like this we can see the elements where the uh, quality is poor and where the quality is good. Similarly we can have to uh, observe some other factor that is uh, orthogonal quality. So we know that orthogonal quality, ortho means 90 degrees and the orthogonal quality and skewness are the two uh, important mesh metrics that are uh, related. So if you have 
a very good orthogonal quality like this here you can see uh, a perfect uh, quadrilateral element so that is having a 90 degrees in between that and here in triangular case this is perfect so in this case the orthogonal quality is one whereas in this case the orthogonal quality is getting less so the uh, orthogonal quality should be nearer to one so that is the perfect case or ideal case so in this particular mesh we are having a maximum orthogonal quality of one in most of the elements let us see where the orthogonal qualities are one so these we can see many of these elements are having orthogonal quality nearer to one uh, almost that's between 9.9 to 1 so these elements are very good in orthogonal quality and uh, uh, minimum we are having uh, 0.36 that is let's see where the poor elements are here, here you can see the a uh, very good uh, very poor orthogonal quality elements with very poor orthogonal quality and this orthogonal quality and skewness are uh, very related parameters so, so here, here you can see when element is having very less orthogonal quality the skewness will be very high so the, the element will be skewed like this here you can see this is a regular element and this is skewed element and uh, while searching in the internet i have uh, i got some recommendations by ansys and uh, that it is said that if the skewness is uh, between 0 to 0.25 mesh is having very good quality so similarly in in terms of orthogonal quality that sh that should be nearing to 1 so here i can see the average uh, orthogonal quality is 0.9 that means most of the elements are having good quality and uh, also we can see the skewness also skewness is also more or less similar so if the, ortho, if the orthogonal quality is poor that will be more skewed so these elements are having very high skewness values right. so these elements are having very high skewness values and hence the orthogonal quality will be poor so the orthogonal quality and skewness are related parameters which tells about the quality of the mesh so not only these matrices uh, so these are some uh, indications that will give you this mesh is good or poor uh, but before uh, proceeding into publication or before proceeding into a conclusion from these results we must do an analysis called mesh sensitivity analysis how this mesh is sensitive to the results that is how the uh, results are sensitive to the mesh size so you can also have some different mesh sizes and we can have some global and local controls and we can i get the results and we have to ensure that the size of the element doesn't affect the final end results of the simulation or this analysis hope this video helped you want any clarification or help please feel free to comment thank you